уважаемые коллеги. Dear colleagues, I welcome all the participants here in the conference hall and all those following the events here uh, via the internet. The previous speaker made a preview about uh, Ozone Ver uh, satellite. It'll be a radar a satellite uh, operating in uh, multiband mode, high energy capacity, and a number of uh, uh, perspective uh, modes. It's interferometry, uh, moving target selection, and a few others. In my paper, expand them uh, through a wider use of bands. The proposed space system may contain three frequency bands located on different uh, satellites. These are X band, P band, and uh, VHF band. And this table, this summary table, uh, summarizes uh, some of the features of these frequency bands. For example, if we uh, look at the resolution uh, penetration uh, capabilities, the size and dimensions of the receiver and transmitting unit, and the how ionosphere uh, influences the signal. So we can see as the wavelength increases, uh, we are losing uh, spatial resolution. In the meantime, the penetration of uh, radio waves through vegetation increases, and it is also uh, possible to perform um, over-surface uh, sensing. As the wavelength increases, the area that the antenna must accommodate also increases, and the atmosphere impact on signal coherence becomes greater. An important point here is that in VHF band, such systems are not uh, implemented in space because there is a high uh, impact on uh, signal coherence. In other words, it's impossible to form a radar image with uh, a resolution less than 100 meters. And the area of uh, antenna does not allow to speak of <laughs> a sufficient appeal of such systems. In order to implement uh, observations, uh, VHF observations from space. We're offering a rather innovative approach, very nice looking idea, and that is the use of multi-positioning uh, radar monitoring. Last year, I touched upon this subject somewhat, so it'll be a reminder. The key principle here is the separation of uh, receiving and transmitting position in uh, VHF uh, unit located on board. And the receiving station will be located on the ground. As we can see here, the signal goes through ionosphere. And another key thing here is that the receiving station uh, can uh, receive direct signal uh, from the satellite. So we receive information about uh, uh, signal interferences as it goes through the ionosphere, and we can offset that as we generate uh, a radar image. 
this shows you that uh, a radar transmitter emits a larger area uh, but the next slide which showed that the radar image can only be generated from the area where a fluctuations uh, uh, phase signal fluctuations correlation is close to what we receive uh, through the uh, direct channel. This is a uh, principally frame-based imaging. Uh, last year I uh, enumerated uh, the distinctive features of the system. Now I won't uh, go into further detail. As for the X-band applications, here we have to uh, trade off and uh, we have to lower some of the characteristics intentionally. So this is a summary table of uh, uh, features of SAR uh, radio, radio locator where the antenna requirements are uh, smaller for 300 kilometers for 300 kilometers height we're talking about the required uh, antenna area of uh, four square meters in terms of spatial resolution uh, there are no losses and the uh, shrinkage of the antenna area results in uh, energy losses radiometric resolution suffers as a result it becomes lower uh, as opposed to using antennas uh, of the proper dimensions this type of approach as being uh, uh, criticized uh, from a wide variety of users but our approach is that high-res modes are necessary to monitor small dimension uh, targets so high-res uh, modes are capable of uh, performing tasks based on uh, uh, detection and monitoring of compact uh, objects with good reflectance capacity. So the available energy is enough here. But when it comes to objects with uh, low reflectance distributed in space, distributed spatially, can be captured uh, with a smaller spatial resolution where the energy makes it possible to speak of uh, changes in uh, characteristics with uh, better radiometric characteristics. Uh, this report implies, in fact, the availability of uh, criticism from your side with regard to this approach. This next slide shows uh, uh, some of the features in P and VHF bands. No need to delve into details. It's uh, primarily frame-based mode. Let me say again that uh, locating P, X, and VHF band uh, radars uh, on one apparatus uh, is impossible. So we are designing a platform for SAR in X band. Some of the features are shown here. The size, the weight, the antenna size. solar panel 
and we've already designed a platform to accommodate VHF and P-band uh, radars. We can see that the dimensions of the satellite can be much smaller and the weight too. And this is a nice looking solution which allows uh, accommodating on such uh, small platforms uh, radar systems uh, for such bands. As a last note, here is a list of benefits that this uh, system offers. All weathered monitoring, regardless of the time of the day. Uh, low cost of the system vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the systems in use. Uh, lack of loss in time for delivery and ability to detect and monitor under soil structures and objects. We are doing this work in, uh, with the heavy engagement of uh, young experts, students of Pavolsky um, uh, University of Telecommunication and uh, Aeronautics, uh, Samara University. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Do we have questions? If there are no questions, then in the interest of time, we will finish off this session and we'll have the last presentation coming first as we begin the next session. Please uh, make the coffee break shorter, 15-20 minutes tops. Thanks. <laughs>